we have made a move on classroom sizes where they have not made any move is on a $1.5 billion taxpayer increase to salary at a time when we've offered 1%, at a time when the QP uh, union workers uh, in a comparable sector, uh, QP education workers, accepted voluntarily and overwhelmingly ratified it uh, almost at 80%, a deal that, that caps in compensation and salary at 1%. Sure. And, yet, and yet, when we offered that exact same uh, offer, tabled it, did it orally through the media, and tabled it thereafter, the exact same offer to OSSTF education workers, the exact same similar work, essentially, they rejected it swiftly. Minister, QP's come out and said that the only reason they accepted the 1% wage increase is because of the Me Too clause. So is it really fair to compare OSSTF and FO and OECTA with QP when QP said we've only accepted the 1% raise increase because we know that any increase these other sectors or other federations get will get? Yeah, the fact is that their members accepted a 1% increase. They're, I mean, they're banking on a potential increase. Our position, quite clearly, is we are, we believe in the legislation, Bill 124, 1% 1 represents a $750 million net increase to the taxpayer for compensation for wages. That is reasonable, especially when you benchmark it jurisdictionally across the country when we know educators in Ontario are the second highest remunerated in the nation. Now, I respect teachers and they should be paid well. We want to retain talent in the classroom. They're educating the next generation of our economy and our democracy. So I accept the premise to invest in teachers, but 1%, $750 million is a sufficient number in the estimation of taxpayers. What they're requesting is a $1.5 billion increase. And I find that unacceptable and in Congress with the priorities of families who are telling me and the Premier and every member of our team to invest in the front line, which is what we're trying to do.